Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my blog. It's quite a challenge trying to work out what you're going to do for a blog, and I've been thinking about it the last few days. And on Thursday morning last week, the early hours, God woke me up with a verse to share. Okay. And I pondered over the weekend, tried some experimental videos, but it really hasn't worked out. And then this morning, about mm, quarter to four, six I had some ideas and I was thinking about my life in business. I was a, a senior accountant finance director group finance controller so I was dealing in statistics and numbers but also during my time I was responsible for computer systems so I did projects of implementations of new systems and I remember back in the late 80s early 90s I worked at Stansted Airport for a group called the FFB group a Swedish group and we were the UK operation. We had a hundred million pound investment in new hangars and offices at Stansted and at Manchester airports. And I can remember we were investing big monies into computer systems at Stansted airport. I mean, we're into hundreds of thousands of pounds and this came under me. And I remember we had a problem one day because we had hangar on either side of the runway at Stansted airport and British Telecom were doing some digging and they cut through our cables and suddenly our computer systems could not talk to Hangar 4 on the other side of the runway and it exposed us so we put in a project of, re of resilience. How could we have a system of computers that would stay up and running no matter what would happen, what accident or disaster? Because uh, we had 160,000 part numbers on our stock system. And every month, my team had to do a manual printout. This printout was four foot high, just over a metre high of paper that would be taken down to the warehouse in case the computer systems went down. They'd have a stock position of, say, one or two or three weeks ago since the last listing. And so we invested in new computer systems. We bought double two computers. So in case one process went down, the other one would automatically take over. We had mirrored disks. So if one disk failed, it would still be posting to the other disk. We could mirror the data. So if one disk failed, the system would go, would keep on going. We put windows in our computer room, a big room, about the size of the church hall, perhaps a little bit smaller, where people could see and make sure nobody was in there, shouldn't be in there, special locks on the door. We put an air conditioning so as to maintain the temperature. We put a false floor in just in case we had flooding. We put every contingent we could think about. And we spent hundreds of thousands of pounds. Just the physical making the room right cost us 50,000 pounds. And that was a lot of money in those days. And I can remember I had to do a report to the board, main board meeting, and we said, we're ready to go live on this date, on this particular date, Everything was turned on the brand new system. Within four hours, the whole of our computer system had crashed. I can remember running down from office on the top floor down to the first floor, running along the corridor to find out what had happened. I said, we spent all this money. How can our system go down the first day? And the IT systems manager said to me, well, Barry, we planned for every contingency we could think of, but we never planned for the cleaner. I said, sorry, we never planned for the cleaner. I said, what do you mean the cleaner? Well, she came in at lunchtime to hoover the floor. So she went in through the special coded door, went in the room, pulled a plug out the socket, plugged in a hoover and started hoovering. I said, you're not telling me that one plug controlled? Yes. That one plug she pulled out turned off all our computer systems and brought the company to a halt. To put the plug back in and reboot the systems would take an hour. These were complex computer systems back in the uh, early 1990s, a digital VAC system, mirrored. Goodness knows what else technical words they threw at me, I didn't understand. But it struck me, no matter what planning we do, problems happen. Not just in my business life, but in my private life, in my church life, things would go wrong that I didn't anticipate and I'd have to react to. And of course, we're told, pray, 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 pray. Whatever you ask in prayer, God will answer. And actually, that's not always the first answer I discovered in my own life. 
Yes, nine times out of ten, I pray. But I learned in business that when I had a major problem, and I was getting up to the time of leaving, I'd say, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to come back the next day with a fresh mind and objectively look at the problem. And invariably when I come back, came back the next day, I'd look at it from a different angle. And suddenly the solution was there. I'd missed the number of a spreadsheet or I was looking at it from the wrong angle and misunderstood it. Now you may say, well, Barry, as a Christian, pray, pray, pray. I don't disagree with praying. But there's a verse in the Bible God showed me last week. It's been in my life for the last 40 years. It's Psalm 46, verse 10. It says, be still and know that I am God. Louise said to me last week, you do everything at high speed, Barry. You eat fast, you talk fast, you run up projects fast. You, I said, I don't drive fast. True, she said, but everything's at speed for you. I do. So being still is not intuitive in my nature. To sit down and stop. And when I look at that verse, for me, it was just telling me two things. Firstly, I have to make the effort to stop. But it means sitting in an armchair on the edge of my bed, but just getting out of the day-to-day -day run of things. And then reflect on God and my relationship with him. Because sometimes I found that I get things out of perspective. I'm looking at the wrong angle. I'm expecting God to suddenly magically sort a problem out, realising, well, these are part of life. These are things that happen. My health has changed recently. I know not what the future entails. So I sit before God and still, well, OK, Lord, you know these things. And if you've allowed these things to happen in my life, you will provide and care for me and help me during these times. And so I want to leave you with that simple thought today. Pray by all means. Great thing to do when you have issues. Get other people to pray. Put it on the WhatsApp, a prayer chain or whatever. But there are times when stop. Think. Be still. Know that he is God. And just seek him. I'm still going to struggle. I'm still going to run at 90 miles an hour and speak at that sort of speed and have crazy ideas. But there will be times you will never see or know when I sit and be still and know that he is God. He is my God. Take time, just five minutes. Have a good day.